use the source. Okay, let's do a little practice with fractions here. Just to help us remember some of the rules uh, and how to solve problems with fractions. Uh, notice the instructions do say simplify your final answer. So we got to make sure it's a reduced fraction or a simplified fraction, however you want to call that. So let's start with A. So A says, uh, let's see here, 3 fourths times 1 half. Okay. Remember when you have a fraction, or excuse me, fractions, uh, when you multiply, you multiply across the top and across the bottom. So 3 times 1 on the top, that's 3. 4 times 2 is 8, because um, we're multiplying across the bottom. Uh, and that gives us what? Uh, well, that gives us 3 eighths. Now, is that simplified? Well, first thing, does 3 go into 8? No. Is there a number that goes into 3 and 8? Now, when I say go into, right, I mean, is there a number that um, divides into or is a divisor of these? So, uh, and the answer to both those questions is no. So that's my final answer. So multiplication is really nice. Okay, B here is two thirds plus one sixth. Now addition is actually harder. Uh, remember, when you do addition, you have to have a common denominator. The denominator is the bottom part. So in other words, the two bottom numbers need a match, which right now they don't. The bottom number on the left fraction is three. The bottom number on the right fraction is six. They don't match. So how do I make a match? Well, I can multiply this by 2 over 2. Now, the reason I can do that is 2 over 2 is just 1, right? So if I multiply that fraction by 1, I'm really not changing it, even though it looks like it. So 2 over 2 is, or excuse me, 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6, so now that's 4 sixths plus one-sixth, and I have a common denominator, which is why I chose the two, because I knew three times two would get me six for a denominator, and that would match this one. So now, when you add fractions, remember, you keep the denominator, and you just add the top numbers. Again, uh, can I reduce or simplify that? Uh, no, I don't think there's a number that goes into both of those, so I'm done. Okay, moving on to C. So I have 10 thirds times 1 half times 2 fifths. So remember, if you're multiplying, you just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. So if I do this kind of a longhand way, this really becomes 10 times 2 times 1. And I just said those in the opposite order that I wrote them. Bottom is 3 times 2 times 5. So 10 times 1 times 2, that's 20. 3 times 2 is 6 times 5, 30. Uh, I can reduce or simplify that. Uh, I can take and divide both numbers divided by 10. So why don't I show that? So take both of those, divide by 10, and I get 2 and 3, and now it's simplified. Okay. All right, so again, multiplication is really nice. D, 3 fourths plus, I'm going to leave some space here, 2 sevenths, uh, let's see here, plus 5 halves. All right, so I need that common denominator. So if I'm looking at these, I have 4, 7, and 2. Uh, I need a number that 4, 7, and 2 all go into. All right, and we often refer to that as the least common multiple. So the least common multiple of 4, 7, and 2 is... 28. 28 is the smallest number or the least number that all four of those numbers would uh, multiply to, or least common multiple. 
So, to get uh, to 28, I'd have to take 4 times 7. So I better do it on top as well. Uh, I need to take this times 4. And to get to 28, I need to take 2 times 14. Okay. So now, this changed my problem to 3 times 7 is 21 over 28. 2 times 4 is 8 over 28. 5 times 14. Ooh, that's a tougher one. Try to do that in my head. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go to the calculator. I get 70 over 28. Now they all have a common denominator. Remember, when you add them, you keep that common denominator. 21 plus 8 plus 70, that is 99. And now, can I simplify that? Uh, let's see here. A number that can go into both of those. Uh, let's see. Nope, I don't think so. I think if I tried a bunch of different ones, uh, that wouldn't work. So then I'm going to call it quits right there. All right. My other option would be to turn this into an improper fraction. And the idea being 28 can go into 99 three times. And so 28 times 3 is 84 take uh, 84 out of 99 and that leaves me with 15 so 3 and 15 28's uh, but I prefer this form the first form I have there in the box because that's that's an improper fraction and it just works better mathematically um, when you're doing other things now a quick note let me bring up the calculator uh, a lot of people have issues uh, working on using their calculator. Okay, I have a TI-84 here, or excuse me, 83 plus. So when you do fractions, a lot of calculators have a fraction button. Uh, but when I do fractions, I always just put them in parentheses. And remember, a fraction means divide. So when I look at this thing right here, 5 6 that means divide. So why don't I do, uh, why don't I do B here? So parentheses, 4 divided by 6th parentheses. Uh, I just like to do that. Now that means the fraction 4 6 plus parenthesis 1 divided by 6 parenthesis. Okay, now if I hit enter, that spits it out. Now that's a decimal form. Um, now on this calculator, if I hit math, there's this button here to change it to a fraction. Hit enter again, it's 5 6, and that's what I got. So you can do it on your calculator. Just remember, a fraction does mean divide. So if you type your fractions in like this on your calculator, um, that's another way to do it on there. Um, the problem is if you don't inc include those parentheses, a lot of times uh, the calculator won't get it right.